Hello everyone and welcome to today's episode of Geometry Nodes in 3.1 where today I'll be showing you how to make this relaxing pointy wave effect. So without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's go and clear the scene except for our pointy object. In this case, it is a Lego piece. So let's separate that into another collection and hide everything else. So this is just a simple Lego piece. As you can see, it's a bit pointy and stuff like that. This could be anything. It could just be a cone with a point on the end or anything like that. But in this case, I'm using a Lego piece. So with this, let's move it over to the side. That'll be our instanced object. So now let's add in a plane to be our geometry nodes object. So now that we have this, let's add in a new geometry node. What we're going to do first is add in a mesh primitive grid and then an instance on points node. Let's hook that up into there, that into the points. And let's drag and drop our object into our scene and hook that up into the instance tab. And as we can see, as we do this, we now have more of these little pieces right here. So now that we have this, let's go and make it so that all this empty space is filled. So all we need to do is keep turning up the amount of vertices until it kind of matches right here. That seems good enough. Now let's make it the same for the Y axis. So let's do that. And I think, yeah, that fits pretty well. Just fiddle with this until your grid is all filled up. All right. Now that we have this, we could start to manipulate the rotation. So to do that, let's use the position input right here. Always keep your nodes organized. We only have four right now, but just keep that in mind for later. So now that we have this, I'm going to go and add in a separate XYZ node right here. So now in this case, what I'm going to do is use the X axis because as we could see, these Lego pieces will rotate best on the Y axis. So we're going to use the X axis. And if we go and use a vector math multiply node and hook that up into the rotation, apply that to the Y axis, we could see that as we go along the x-axis, these rotate on the y-axis, and we are already getting some stuff happening. But we don't want uh, it to happen quite like this. We want it to be in a wave pattern. So to do that, what we need to use is a math node set to sine. Now what a sine does is it takes a value and then it makes it a wave that goes from positive one to negative one. So in this case, the curves will, uh, the Lego pieces will rotate one way to negative one, which I think this is negative one, and this is positive one. But what if we want more waves to occur uh, more frequently? Well, to do that, what we want to do is add in a multiply node and multiply before the sine wave. And as we can see, more of this is happening, but as we can see, the, uh, it's uh, affecting it a bit too much. So what we need to do is just turn this down to maybe until these don't clip into each other. So I'm going to set the multiply to like six and then the vector math multiply to something like that. I think that's pretty good. And now let's animate this. I'm going to hide the camera because that's that's actually been in our way this whole time. OK, so now that we have this, let's go and animate this. So let's add in an add node after here. And what we want to do switch that to add, is input hashtag frame divided by 24. And what this will do, uh, if you watched my other tutorials, as the timeline goes by, it'll add more to this value. So we do that. And if we play the animation, we can see it's happening a bit fast. So let's go and change that to 100. I think, yeah, I think that's pretty good. We do have some clipping going on, but it's not too noticeable especially if we view it from this side. Okay, now that we have this going, let's go and uh, vary, uh, add some variation to the wave right here because right now the whole thing is going at once. We don't want that. So to change that up a little bit, what we're going to do is add in a noise texture, noise, and let's set this to one dimensional noise. So what we're going to do now is hook up the Y axis into this noise texture and then we're going to add the noise texture to our, uh, our gradient right here. So just hook that up into there. And as we can see, we're getting some variation, but we'll manipulate that a bit more in a second. Let's just do a general overview for the time being. We take the position, take the x-axis, we add a bit to it to animate it, 
multiply uh, changes how often the waves occur. Uh, occur. The sine function makes it all wavy. The multiply, vector math multiply, makes it so that it only affects one axis of rotation. If we were to put it on the x-axis as well, as we can see, we get this happening, which could be cool uh, if we were using different objects. But in this case, we will only want one axis of rotation. Again, instance on points, all that, we went over that. So yeah, now that we have this, Let's go over and change up the noise texture a little bit to give a more interesting result. All right, so let's change the detail down to zero and maybe increase the scale of the noise texture. Yeah, something like that. But we could also multiply the noise texture after the fact to change the basically the strength of the offset. So if we set this to like 0.1, we can see that there's just a little bit of variation to our wave right here. Let's go into the render view real quick. There we go. Not the prettiest because the lighting's not set up correctly. But, oh yeah, that's better. So now that we have this, let's increase the multiply to, I don't know, something pretty high. Now this makes it so that every wave is happening at a different time. But if we decrease the scale, we can get something more like that. Yeah, it's all up to personal preference. I think the more different waves looks a bit better, but feel free to experiment with this and come up with your own uh, patterns and such. I think that's basically the entire tutorial. Let's add in a little bit right here, at least for the motion. I'm going to touch on this shading in just a second. Let's add in a few frames just to organize everything a little bit. Uh, yeah, we could bundle that into some frames here. It doesn't have to make too much sense. It just needs to make it easy for the eye. So let's group those parts together. There we go. And if you want to increase the bounds of this effect, well, just increase the size a bit and then increase the vertices until everything meshes. There we go. Okay, now for shading. For shading, if you want a random color per uh, piece right here, uh, you go and select your object right here, and I'll just remake the shader from scratch just for the tutorial. So new material, new material right here, input, object info. As we could see, we have a random uh, input right here. As we could see, that gives us a random gradient for each one. So we could use a color ramp to choose a color, in this case, orange. And we hooked that up into the principled node Maybe turn down the roughness a little bit, something like that. And for the lighting, I'll just touch up on the lighting a little bit. Uh, I just used a sun lamp. It's a little strong at the moment because I think this is the wrong orientation for the plane. But I set it to 30, camera angle, really zoom in on that. Yeah, let's rotate this to make it more like the original piece. Do that. And then what I did was just copy this a few times just to fill up the screen space. Uh, let's move that over a little bit more. There we go. And then, boom, you have this scene, which looks pretty cool. But yeah, thank you for watching. Be sure to put a like on this tutorial. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out my Twitter account, my Gumroad account. It has plenty of free and paid stuff on there. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.